Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Glory career mode with St. Pauli. This is episode number 37 and we start tonight's episode off by still looking for some more signings with our Buccaneers after picking up five new players in the last episode uploaded this morning. I'll leave a link to that video if you missed it in the description. But the summer transfer window continues in today's episode and look at the first two players I am targeting. Two teenagers, one 19, one 18, one called Colin Kadira and and one called Sebastian Horn. These two German teenagers are both in the free agents pool. And look at these stats, especially on the 19-year-old. Those physical stats are unbelievable. That center Alex fantastic. Already valued at £5 million. Pounds. It is a shame he's only 5'11", because as you guys know, I like my center backs to be 6' plus ordinarily. But I don't think that one inch is going to make that much of a difference when he's got such a high jumping stat. And also Sebastian Horn as well, with some absolutely fantastic stats. 73 rated at just 18 years old. 4.3 million value valuation as well and we put in contract offers for those players there we shall wait and see where they want to come and join us here at the Milan Tour Stadion and this is exactly why you guys need to check the free agents pool every single time you start a new season because oftentimes there won't really be that many good players in there they'll be they'll be basically just scraps you know there might be like one young new gen slash regen with you know showing great potential or one that's got five star skills or something but for the most part there's there's not many you know like, like weldies for the future if you will as Manchester United are going to sign Kane which uh, surprised me but um, you know there, there, are, there are times where you're going to find players like this and we found two of them in season three two absolute gems and even though we don't necessarily need either of those players you know our centre-back role is probably one of our deepest roles on the pitch we've got some fantastic young centre-backs on our team right now and we've got three goalkeepers here as well now Leno coming in Justin Bilo and Svila are still on loan i would still going to take them on free transfers we're only paying their wages which aren't very much and again they look absolutely fantastic as uh, 19 and 18 year olds eventually they both accepted their contracts we had to uh, give Kadira an important first team player status but I don't mind that much at all because 75 overall means he probably will go in the first team and when you take a look at their stats as well I mean I gotta say two absolute bargains in season three Sebastian Hahn 4.3 million pound valuation 18 years old as you'll see he's got two star skills as well uh, as a two star weak foot as well and he's also got potential to to be special. Sebastian Horn, a free agent goalkeeper, has potential to be special. Colin Kadira, physical monster. Look at those stats. 91 strength at just 19. 88 jumping. 77 acceleration. 81 sprint speed. We want physical monsters. This guy may be 5 foot 11, but is still physically fantastic. And he's got four star skill moves as well. Sadly, he doesn't have potential to be special, but does have the exciting prospect tag. This is why you check the free agents pool year after year after year it doesn't matter what club you're managing it doesn't matter how good your team is you should always check the free agents pool just in case because you might find gems like those so Sebastian and Colin the free agent duo they've signed for us and I gotta say I am so so excited about the pair of them I think they could be absolutely fantastic for many years to come but to also Hoffenheim put in a bid for Pedro Enrique here of 5.5 million pounds now he's valued at 6.5 million pound a 25 Five year old 77 rated center back we asked for eight million pound for the brazilian because i've seen quite a few of you guys saying pedro enrique man you gotta sell him like seriously he started the season off really well last year but then he had that injury and since he came back from that injury he just he didn't recover like he, he sort of just he just didn't look like the same player anymore he didn't look like the same center back anymore he was just too sluggish too lethargic and whilst I love the fact he's got 98 strength, he's six foot three as well. His jumping stat isn't very high, and he doesn't actually win that many balls in the air. His strength is good, his strength is mighty, but uh, I don't really feel as though he's someone who I have too many. I guess I'm not really that keen on him. And uh, you know, for, for me, a lot of you guys said Pedro Enrique, he's got to go. And I, I think after the injury, he didn't recover. And I think you're probably right there. So I decided to sell him like you guys requested. Pedro Enrique has gone for eight million pounds and with Colin Kadira coming in on a free transfer yes he's a little bit smaller and you know a little bit stronger but at 19 years old several years younger and only two ratings lower with much more potential I gotta say that that to me I'm fine with Pedro Enrique going off and I'm there I don't mind too much but uh, also I thought if we sold Pedro Enrique for eight million pounds we'll have a little bit more money left over after winning the preseason tournament in the last episode and the sale of the Brazilian centre-half so I thought why not go in for a new player and I decided to go in for one of the players that was in the poll 
goal for a new signing for this season. Davy Selka, uh, the striker that finished fourth in the voting. Now, of course, we couldn't sign Sardar Asmoon, so I'm glad you guys said we could sign, um, we should sign um, Yusuf Paulson instead. But I thought, why not get his RB Leipzig colleague, Davy Selka as well, who was also in the poll? Because I really like the look of this guy. He's only 23 years old. He's six foot four. And I thought with Aziz Buhadu, who's now certainly going to leave the club come the end of the season or in the near future, as he's not going to get a new contract, I thought, why don't we try and swap him alongside the valuation £8 million for Davy Selka, see if Aziz can go to Leipzig. We can bring Davy to the Milan tour in a little like for like swap there. But Selka is younger, Selka is taller, and Selka is quicker as well. And he's got better finishing too. And then the big came for Buhadu, and I thought that was typical, right? But uh, it was from 1860 Munich, who had just been relegated, and we were like, no, we're not going to let him go to the Allianz Arena, man. 1860 are sort of like mini rivals of us in this series. He can't go there. And he's too good for the fight of Bundesliga. I want Buhadu to stay in the Bundesliga. I want to play against him this season, because we all remember what he was like in season one. Absolutely fantastic. We love Aziz. We really do. He's one of the reasons why, well, he is the main reason we won a title in season one. But Aziz, thanks for your service. We appreciate it very much, but you're not going to get a new contract. Go enjoy your 30s in Leipzig and, uh, and try and hold down a place in the first team at the Red Bull Arena. We're going to sign Davy Selka as a like-for-like uh, -like replacement. And I've got to say, he's a like-for-like -like replacement and an improvement as well, whilst being younger as well. I think that's a really good sign in there. £8 million pounds plus Buhadu's out of contract in the summer. And look at Buhadu's. He's he's very happy. Aziz Buhadu's is very happy to now be in Leipzig. He's getting paid now. He's getting a lot more money in Leipzig than he is here at the Milan Tour. It's like with Casillas. We've sold him, but for his benefit, you know. So Buhadu's is gone. Selka is in. And I thought that was a really good piece of business. But following that, it was time for transfer deadline day. We still had like an abundance of teenage players here that we got from the academy last season uh, who we weren't getting any bids for for selling or loaning, which made my little monologue in this morning's episode about why you should play someone in pre-season tournament games to increase the chance of them getting sold or loaned. Completely irrelevant, pointless, and, and now I sound like a moron. But so we did get a bid for Rio Miechi. He's off to Freiburg for £1.5 million, but Billing is staying here as a rejected bid from Genoa. As even though the Great Dane probably won't be in the first 11 this year, we still want to keep him here. And uh, also Miechi does go to Freiburg as well. So once of Arsenal, Rio Miechi is gone. He was a really good squad player for us, to be honest, but wasn't really getting that much better. And I think we can do better than Miechi now. We're into season three, for goodness sake. We're into Europe now. We can do better than Rio Miechi. But uh, also, I thought, why don't we go for someone who was here last season on loan and in season one on loan as well. Now, I did briefly mention it in this morning's episode. I said I'd like to bring back him and also Ozcan on loan. Kai Havertz from Bayer Leverkusen, 76 rated right midfielder. Most of the time he was on the pitch though last season, he was playing in a more central role and that's why he was much better than in season one. In season one, if you remember, he didn't pick up a single goal or an assist. He was very, very poor for the most part, but last season, a much more impactful player and I think it's because I was playing him through the middle. We offered Leverkusen a £5 million deal plus Christopher Butchman out of contract in the summer. Leverkusen rejected it, said they weren't interested, but then Freiburg said, you know what, Rio Miichi's just come through the door and he said, can you bring Christopher with me as well? He's my bro. So uh, Freiburg put in a bid for Butchman as well as Miichi on deadline day and I thought, ah, oh, I can't split those two part that, that partnership up. I didn't even think those two were friends, but uh, apparently they're best friends. They're both going to Freiburg on deadline day. That's fine with me. So I thought I'll use the money after selling Butchman to bring in Kai, and I couldn't do it instantaneously, which is kind of annoying, but uh, there you go. But uh, anyway, eventually, uh, Butchman went to uh, to Freiburg for £2.8 million. Was it £2.8 million? It was about that. Uh, for, uh, for, about a, for about a fee anyway, as uh, we were just a bit here from Cologne for a man. And then I used that money, uh, yeah, £2.8 million. I used that money to go ahead and put in a new bid for Kai, which was, I think it was just over his valuation. He's valued at £7 million, but at 19 years old, 76 overall, he's only going to get better. So we offered seven point five million pounds. There we go. And uh, we thought we'd wait and see what Leverkusen say. We advanced through transfer deadline day, but there were only three hours left. So that meant that if uh, Leverkusen rejected our initial bid, that would mean that Kai wouldn't be able to sign for us. Because we had to do it on each single advance, make progression. And as you'll see after the first advance, Leverkusen said, yes, that's enough. Seven and a half million pounds for Kai. We shall take the money. You can take the youngster. He spent two years in the middle and Tories probably forgot what Leverkusen looks like. So we put in a contract over for, uh, for Kai Havertz. We could just about to afford uh, uh, 30 grand a week, which is a five grand a week wage increase. I thought I've got to make sure I get this right because if I don't get it right on this advance, that means that Kai won't be coming in. We have to make sure he signs this contract before deadline day. And as you'll see, with one hour on the clock, would he sign? Dun dun dun! 
Moon? Yes, he would. Kai Havert signs the contract as Moon... Had a bid from uh, Monaco there. Uh, Rostov wanted £31 million pounds for the guy, so he certainly couldn't afford to sign him this year. But yeah, Kai Havertz is in. £7.5 million. Pounds. It, it took up our entire transfer budget to bring in the youngster, but I think he'll be a really good signing for us because even though he's not physically strong, you saw what he did last season in the limited minutes he got. He played very, very well. We know Kai. You know, one of the reasons why I brought him on, in on loan in the first season was because we wanted to take a look at him to possibly sign him on a permanent deal in a few years' time. That's exactly what we've done. He's only 19. His valuation shot up to £9 million as well. He's only going to get better. I prefer him through the middle as well, and I, I think that's a really smart signing right there for £7.5 million. So that would indeed end transfer deadline day then. Deadline day ended. We signed 10 players in the summer transfer window in total, if you include the four pre-contract signings we made way back in January. And i got to say, I think we did some absolutely fantastic business. Bayern went on a spending spree themselves uh, in, uh, in this summer transfer window. Window. But in the end, we spent £25 million on new players here at the Millen Tour. Uh, 25.5 million pounds. Get it right, Doc. Jesus. And uh, i got to say, I, I think we've done some really good business. You know, obviously, Buhadus is now gone. Pedro Enrique is gone. miachi has gone. butchman has gone as well. Those four players were really, really important from the past two seasons. Pedro Enrique in season two. And those three players, Buhadus, Miachi, and Butchman, were all here way back in season one. They were some Pauli originals. But I think we've done some really great business. And I have to say, I think, I think when you look at the team we're building here at St. Pauli, we're building a team for the future. We're building a team that is, you know, well, primarily physically strong. We're building a team which has got potential. And I think when you look at Buhadus, when you look at Butchman, when you look at Miyaichi, they weren't really going to get that many minutes this year in season three with all our new signings. Pedro Enrique sure would have done. But again, a lot of you guys said that you should probably look to sell him. So I did. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like just selling them, letting them go elsewhere for first team football was probably the right thing to do. Get a little bit of scratch for them and then reinvest in the younger players as well. But anyway, Anyways, look at the uh, transfer history here. A uh, quick question for you guys. As always, come to the end of the transfer window. How do you rate our transfer business out of 10? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would definitely give ourselves a 9 out of 10 for this one. I mean, come on, man. Seriously, we've got some really good players in our team now. We've got some really, really awesome youngsters coming through as well. Those two free agents, put, uh, two free agents coming in, in my opinion, definitely bump up what would have been an 8 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10 for me, especially if they both got really great potential as well. So let me know in the comment section down below how you rate our transfer business out of 10 as you take a look at the squad report here and uh, also how the team will be set up going into season three as well so i'm i'm excited for the upcoming season you know i really really am i definitely feel like after last season uh, finishing in fifth place in europa league i think we can definitely challenge for the top four this season no doubt about it this team is getting better season after season it's looking stronger and stronger in depth as well in my opinion champions league is definitely achievable come the end of the season a top four place it'll be difficult but i definitely think it's doable. My only concern really is that playing in the Europa League means that a lot of my players are going to get a lot tired, uh, a lot more tired as well. Obviously, fixture congestion was never really a problem in Season 2 and Season 1 because in the Bundesliga, there's only uh, 34 games a season and we had no European competition and just a one cup as well. But the Europa League is going to add more tiredness to this team and that's, that's the only concern for me. But I, I think top four should be what we should look to achieve. But I wouldn't be against another Europa League finish for next season. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But this is how the team will be set up. There are 3-5 too. Feel free to give me your lineup suggestions uh, in the comment section down below. But I think this is probably the best lineup we can do while staying with the formation that you guys love so much. The 3 5 2. I think it'll be pretty decent. And uh, you see the league table going into the new season as well. I must say, I'm I'm excited. You know, I'm very, very excited for season three. And our Europa League group, by the way, it has been drawn as Hoffenheim are away. You're going to be our opponents in the cup as well. Our Europa League, uh, uh, League, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Our Europa League group has been drawn. We've got Benfica, Olympiakos, and Norgeland. Is that how you pronounce that? Probably not. But uh, either way, it's, it's not an easy Europa League group. I must say, Benfica and Olympiacos will be very difficult to get by. But I, uh, I, I'm still confident we can get out of that group and make it into the knockout stages. But that would end today's episode of our Road to Glory career mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the episode, then please do leave a like. Have a fantastic Saturday night, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of our RTG career mode featuring the first games of the new season very soon.